It's been well established that Yuki Yanagita is a Japanese baseball legend. He's won seven Pacific League Best Nine awards, six gold gloves, six Japan Series titles, two MVPs, two batting titles, and he's a member of the exclusive Triple Three Club, among countless other achievements. With a trophy shelf like that, Yanagita is easily one of the most decorated players in MPB history, and he'll be remembered as the face of the franchise for the SoftBank Hawks 2010's dynasty. His 2015 MVP campaign in particular will go down as one of the greatest individual seasons of all time, and his numbers are actually very comparable to Bryce Harper's MVP season that very same year. He's accumulated about 70 wins above replacement throughout his 13-year career to this point, making him a guaranteed Hall of Famer, and the only real knock on him is that he's been a bit injury-prone, but ultimately I think it's accurate to call him the Mike Trout or Ken Griffey Jr. of Japan. He's flashy, he's athletic, he's strong, and in his prime he was consistently a 300 hitter, he had a ridiculously high on-base percentage, and he was a 30-30 threat. For players with at least 5,000 plate appearances, Yanagita's career weighted runs graded plus of 179 ranks second all-time in MPB history, only behind the GOAT, Sadaharu O. Oh. But after an injury-riddled 2022 season where Gita posted career lows across the board, many people thought he was in decline or outright washed. Mind you, career lows in this context should be taken with a grain of salt because he still hit 24 home runs with a 151 WRC+. But his walk rate dipped into the single digits for the first time in his career, he was whiffing way more often, and he didn't seem as comfortable transitioning from center field to right field, so there were some areas that indicated Yanagita was indeed on a downward trajectory. I personally had to think long and hard about where to rank Yanagita in my top 50 MPB players list going into 2023 because he was entering his age 34 season and it was within the realm of possibility that he becomes a shadow of his former self if the injuries catch up to him. But I decided not to bet against the generational superstar and placed him as my number 3 overall player, only one spot down from the ranking I gave him the previous year, and honestly the highest I could possibly put him considering that Munetaka Murakami and Yoshinobu Yamamoto exist. And boy am I glad that I didn't fall into the trap of doubting the beast that is Yuki Yanagita because he is off to a scorching hot start in 2023. In 29 games, he's slashing 343, 457, 562 for a 1019 OPS and a 222 WRC+, ranking second in MPB among qualified hitters. He has 6 home runs and 1.7 war, putting him on pace for 29 home runs and 8.3 war that would be right in line with his prime numbers. But perhaps most encouraging of all, Yanagita's O-swing percentage, swings at pitches outside the strike zone, has gone down from a poor 37.8% last year to a very impressive 24.5%. His whiff rate has gone down from a career worst 32.5% to a career best 24.0%, and he's walking more than he strikes out. If that holds up for the entire year, it would be the first time he's walked more than he's struck out in a full season since 2016. Moreover, his hard hit percentage dipped below the 40% mark for the first time in his career last season, but it shot back up to 46.0% so far this year. So the results are excellent and the underlying numbers totally back him up. I don't think Gita ever left, but he is now officially back. Did I mention how clutch this guy is? His career OPS in high leverage situations is 1100, and so far this year, it's 1393. He's always such a monster in the postseason too, so it's just such a shame that we never got to see Yanagita rep Samurai Japan at the World Baseball Classic since he was injured in 2017 and opted out in 2023. But Yanagita, alongside fellow Triple Three Club member Tetsuro Yamada, has really been a model to show that MPB superstars can stay in Japan for their entire careers and still get pretty big contracts even without jumping ship to MLB. He's now in his fourth year of the seven-year contract he signed back in 2019, and he's the highest paid position player in MPB history. He's also hinted at retirement once the contract expires, so hopefully we get to see him at his best until at least 2026. 
Moral of the story, don't bet against Yuki Anagita. If the Hawks win the pennant this year, he may very well secure his third career PL MVP. Special thanks to my patrons. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.